It's your beloved medical channel, Medicosis Perfectionalis. Welcome! Today, let's talk about CO poisoning, diagnosis and treatment. In the previous video, we have discussed the pathophysiology of carbon monoxide poisoning. Today, let's know how to diagnose it and treat it. So, let's get started. But first, let me help you answer the question of last time. Let's say you have two patients. Patient A has hemolytic anemia. The oxyhemoglobin is 60% that of a normal person. Patient B has carbon monoxide poisoning. His oxyhemoglobin is 60% of the normal. Again, everything else being equal, which patient will have a worse tissue hypoxia? And the answer, of course, is B, carbon monoxide poisoning. Why? Because although it's 60% of normal, in case of hemolytic anemia, the 60% is functional. Yes, it's less than the normal 100%, but at least it's functional. While in case of CO poisoning, there is a lift shift. The carbon monoxide on the hemoglobin doesn't let any oxygen be released into the tissue. It's called lift shift of the oxygen dissociation curve. So you have 60% of the oxyhemoglobin correct, but you cannot utilize it, so it's useless. Also, carbon monoxide inhibits the cytochrome C oxidation complex for the mitochondria, so it's a cellular respiration poison, while hemolytic anemia is not. Carbon monoxide damages myoglobin, leading to atraumatic rhabdomyolysis, while anemia, of course, doesn't lead to that. Carbon monoxide is a silent killer. You will die quickly in peace without waking up because your PaO2 is normal and Low PaO2 is a strong stimulant for your brain, for your respiratory center to hyperventilate and wake you up. You will never wake up because of carbon monoxide, because PaO2 is normal, and you will die in peace. Silent killer. I've talked about the difference between complete and incomplete combustion in the previous video. In brief, when oxygen is less abundant, there is incomplete combustion. CO will result. CO is toxic. It's a chemical asphyxiant. Carboxyhemoglobin is always abnormal. What are the causes of carbon monoxide poisoning? The most common cause is fires. It's the most common cause of carbon monoxide poisoning and of cyanide poisoning as well. That's why it's cyanide and company CO poisoning is here. And heaters or firesides, clogged vents, you should change the filter, and stoves, heaters, fillers, like when there is an obstruction. And barbecue, and this is a classic exam question. It will describe the family. After a barbecue, they all have headache. Diagnosis, carbon monoxide poisoning. Treatment, give oxygen. Carbon monoxide poisoning interferes with the normal cellular respiration by inhibiting cytochrome C oxidase. And now complex four is history. What inhibits complex four? Carbon monoxide poisoning, cyanide and hydrogen sulfide. Cyanides leads to cyanide poisoning and cyanohemoglobin. Hydrogen sulfide leads to sulfhemoglobinemia. When complex 4 is gone, ATP is gone. Without ATP, your mitochondria is useless. CO poisoning competitively bind to heme of the hemoglobin. It loves binding hemoglobin more than oxygen does. So CO will kick oxygen aside and will go into the hemoglobin, decreasing the oxygen loading onto the hemoglobin. Also, carbon monoxide doesn't let hemoglobin release oxygen into the tissue. It's called decreased unloading, which will lead to a lift shift of the oxygen dissociation curve. Decreased loading, decreased unloading, and of course, it's a cellular respiration poison. Competitive binding to heme. That's why the treatment of CO poisoning is giving lots of oxygen and lots of oxygen to be able to compete with this ugly carbon monoxide and kick it out. You have to give lots of oxygen in order for oxygen to kick carbon monoxide off the hemoglobin because the affinity is so high. So give lots of oxygen. That's why we give 100% oxygen and if failed, we go to the hyperbaric oxygen chamber. As you know, CO poisoning causes carboxyhemoglobin to exist. Carboxyhemoglobin will decrease your oxygen saturation below normal and oxygen saturation is the same thing as SAO2. 
I've told you before about the differences between pulse oximetry and pulse CO oximetry or co oximetry. Which one should be used in CO poisoning? Yes, pulse CO oximetry, both of which measures the oxygen saturation, also known as SAO2. A probe is clipped over your finger, you see it on the hospitals all the time. This one detects oxy and deoxy, same thing here, but this one has a problem detecting de this hemoglobin, such as met hemoglobin and carboxy hemoglobin. It has problem with both. This can identify this hemoglobin, such as met hemoglobin and carboxy hemoglobin. And met, in uh, case of CO poisoning, we have carboxy hemoglobin. That's why if you have CO poisoning, it's best to use the pulse co-oximetry. Why not the pulse oximetry? It can be falsely normal. So as a stupid doctor, you may deduce that this patient is normal, let's send him home, and they will die. Don't use the pulse oximetry, use the pulse co-oximetry, you freaking idiot. Carbon monoxide will lead to carboxyhemoglobin. Carboxyhemoglobin decreases oxygen loading, which decreases the oxygen saturation. Also, it decreases oxygen unloading, which causes lift shift of the oxygen dissociation curve, leading to tissue hypoxia. As a response, EPO will go up, leading to secondary polycythemia. This, of course, is true about chronic cases of CO poisoning. In acute cases, we don't have time for EPO to increase, but it's theoretically correct. Then, when you have tissue hypoxia, the mitochondria didn't receive oxygen. And, of course, it cannot utilize oxygen because CO is a cellular respiration poison. It interferes with complex 4 of the electron transport chain. The electron transport chain is gone, the mitochondria is done, and there is no ATP formation. Which organs are most affected? The organs that need oxygen most, brain and heart. Then, you have anaerobic glycolysis as an alternative, less efficient source of ATP, which will lead to lactic acidosis, which will lead to metabolic acidosis. Which type? High anion gap or normal anion gap? The answer is high anion gap metabolic acidosis. When the mitochondria cannot utilize oxygen, no oxygen is going to the tissue anymore, so there is no concentration gradient from the hemoglobin to tissue. This is because of the lift shift. The lift shift leads to no oxygen going to tissue. No oxygen is going to tissue, you destroy the concentration gradient that was between the hemoglobin on the RBC and the cell. No concentration gradient here, there is no flow of oxygen down gradient. That's why you have more oxygenated blood going into the vein, because now no blood is going into the cell, the blood will flow from the artery to the vein, and you have increased oxygen in your vein. That's why you have a cherry red skin. It's rare, but it's very important, and your exam question, love it. Carbon monoxide loves binding to three things, hemoglobin, myoglobin, or complex four. Binding to hemoglobin, you know what will happen, it will lift shift the curve. Binding to complex four, it will lead to decreased ATP formation. Binding to myoglobin will lead to decreased oxygen muscles, a traumatic rhabdomyolysis. A traumatic rhabdomyolysis will lead to increased CPK, creatinine phosphokinase, released from the destroyed muscles, and decreased myoglobin in your urine called myoglobin urea. Clinical scenarios. So your question will describe one of the following cases. Always there is the entire family complaining of headache simultaneously. At the same time, at the same moment, they all have headache, which is kind of weird. After... An indoor barbecue, after driving in an old pickup for a long time, okay, long the pickup truck had a problem with the, the exhaust system and the mufflers, and it was very old, so it didn't have a catalytic converter, so they can die of CO poisoning. They are using gasoline heater or a kerosene heater in their house at winter time, so January, December, November, something like that, leaving the engine running in a closed garage, the kid who tried to commit suicide or the kid who stole his father's car keys in order to drive his beautiful old Maserati. Old fur furnace and vents of the HVAC system. The building was on fire. All of these scenarios can lead to the dreaded CO poisoning. Make sure to be able to know it when you see it. Clinically speaking, we have symptoms and signs. The symptoms are very nonspecific, that's why it's commonly misdiagnosed. Headache is the most common symptom, believe it or not. Flu-like symptoms, but without fever. What are the flu-like symptoms? Malaise, fatigue, joint aches. 
chest pain, palpitations, and eventually coma. Smoker, this is chronic poisoning. This is chronic exposure, not the acute exposure that we're talking about. Okay, we have loss of dentition with chronic exposure. Cigarette smokers, this is famous. Neuropsychiatric symptoms, but they occur gradually. It's not like a stroke where it's a sudden psychiatric or neurological problems. Signs, no cyanosis. Why? Increased PVO2 in your veins. There are no cyanosis. Why? Because the oxygen is not going to the tissue. Indeed, it's going to the veins. The PVO2 is relatively equal to the PaO2. Chariot skin. Yes, indeed. Cutaneous bullet. Both of them are very important in CO poisoning. Are they common? No, but they are very significant. Tachycardia. Tachypnea. Hyperthermia. Retinal hemorrhage. Bright red retinal veins. Why? Because of increased PVO2. Amnesia with confabulation. So let's cut the crap and go to the lab. Spectrophotometry. You have increased carboxyhemoglobin. Pulse co-oximetry. You have decreased SAO2. Don't use the pulse oximetry because SAO2 can be normal. Arterial blood gas. PAO2 is normal. PVO2 is normal or increased. Increased than normal in veins. It's not higher than the PAO2. Don't be a stupid idiot. High anion gap metabolic acidosis. What's the pH? It's low. That's the definition of acidosis. What's the bicarbonate? It's low. That's the definition of metabolic acidosis. The anion gap is high because of lactic acid. CBC, you have increased white blood count. Blood chemistry, increased lactate level, causing high anion gap metabolic acidosis. Increased muscle CPK because of the myoglobin. Increased B and creatinine because of the myoglobin in urine can lead to renal failure. Is it acute kidney injury or chronic? Acute, of course, we're talking about acute poisoning. Barbecue. Cyanide level to rule out cyanide poisoning. EKG, very nonspecific. The most common sign on EKG is sinus tachycardia, which is also the most common EKG finding in cases of pulmonary embolism. How to manage CO poisoning? Remove the patient from the exposed environment. Of course, of course, freaking common sense. CO is not absorbed through skin, so there is no need to remove the patient's clothes. But if removing clothes is your thing, uh, go for it. Why not? But be sure there are no lawyers around. I'm just kidding. In the ambulance, oxygen is given through a non-rebreather mask. In the hospital, we give 100% oxygen. If failed or if they, we have severe symptoms, hyperbaric oxygen chamber. So oxygen, oxygen, oxygen. Why oxygen? Giving lots of oxygen will be able to kick carbon monoxide from the hemoglobin. It's called competitive inhibition. Do not aggressively treat acidosis. Why? Because as you know, acidosis shifts the oxygen binding curve to the right. And in cases of CO poisoning, we have a shift to the left. So shift to the right is kind of correcting and mitigating the effect of CO poisoning. So don't aggressively treat the acidosis. Some quick bullet points. Two significant but rare dermatological findings. I've told you about them before. The brain and heart, the most sensitive organs to CO poisoning. Why? They have high blood flow. They have poor tolerance to hypoxia. And they have high oxygen requirement. It's not the amount of CO that matters. It's the amount of carboxyhemoglobin that matters more. So you can be exposed to a large amount of CO. But if carboxyhemoglobin is normal, you should be fine. Okay? As long as you're using the pulse co-oximetry, you stupid idiot. Factors that indicate a poor prognosis in CO poisoning. Cardiorespiratory arrest, old age, exposure for more than 24 hours, acidosis, and loss of consciousness. Survivors of intentional CO poisoning, they are trying to commit suicide, are at high risk for subsequent suicide. The most significant risk factor of suicide is a previous attempt of suicide. The best predictor of future behavior is past behavior. This is just like a word of wisdom. Signs, side effects of oxygen therapy. In the lungs and in the eyes, giving lots of oxygen have side effects such as hyperoxic, acute lung injury, atelectasis, which is collapse, bronchopulmonary dysplasia. In the eyes, we have retinal damage and we have retinopathy of prematurity in young infants. 
Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Follow me on Facebook. I'm posting lots of information, Q's and A's there. So make sure to follow me on Facebook. Go to facebook.com forward slash metacosis. Thank you for watching. Until next time, be safe, stay happy and study hard.